So Venus and Earth are so different that a foolish question like, what's longer, a day or a year, that makes absolutely no sense on Earth, totally makes sense on Venus. A day on Venus is indeed longer than a year. If we put it into Earth's perspective, a day on Venus would equal 243 Earth days, while a year would only last 225 days. So it's like your birthday is every day. Venus is often nicknamed Earth's evil twin. Their differences are so stark, you think they're from different galaxies altogether. Just to give you an idea of how far apart they are, if the day-to-year ratio wasn't enough, the Earth rises in the west on Venus but sets in the east. These days, one of the very few similarities between these two is their size. But try to imagine a time when Venus and Earth were like peas in a pod besties since the beginning of the solar system. Venus used to be the life of the party. NASA scientists think Venus might have even hosted a liquid water ocean in surface temperatures that could have welcomed life for up to 2 billion years. But modern-day Venus is a different story. We're talking extreme temperatures and a thick carbon dioxide atmosphere. So what led to this cosmic makeover? Size, location, and attitude. I mean that the distance from the Sun and internal heat played a huge role in shaping Venus and Earth's destinies. By the way, there used to be three siblings that could have hosted life – Venus, Earth, and Mars. Now imagine three cupcakes in an oven. Once they were fully baked, they were taken out of the oven. One of them was put in front of an open window in the middle of winter. Another was carefully placed on a table and covered with a nice clean kitchen towel. And the last one was accidentally forgotten and left in the oven. Oops. Mars, Earth, and Venus are like those cupcakes. Mars got too cold and not welcoming. Earth is still nice and warm and well-protected from all the unpleasant things, just like the towel protects that lucky cupcake. And Venus got scorching hot and impossible to consume. In terms of development, Earth took the slow and steady route, maintaining its oceans, stable atmosphere, and biodiversity. Venus, on the other hand, cranked up the temperature, evaporated its oceans, and went all in with greenhouse gases. As a result, we have a planet where you'll melt faster than a snowman in July. Mars, on the contrary, will turn you into an ice popsicle within seconds. But chances are, it might have been pretty hospitable at some point. Some scientists believe that Mars used to be covered with flowing rivers and lakes, and had no water shortages. Even today, Mars still has an ocean called Oceanus Borealis, or rather, the remains of what once used to be an ocean. It lost nearly all its water over time. Now, the sources of water on Mars include polar ice caps and minerals and rocks. According to estimates, only 1% of all that water evaporated, while 99% is still locked in the red planet. Ice polar caps are pretty simple to understand, as we have the same thing on Earth. But rocks containing water? Simple. There are at least four types of hydrous minerals on Mars. There are hydrous clays made of silicon oxygen. And the cool thing about them is that they can even contain magnesium and iron, which are sulfur-based hydrous sulfates. Now, don't you? I know you thought of the smell of rotten eggs. But it's typical of hydrogen sulfur and not just sulfur. These minerals have water incorporated right into their chemical formulas. There's also hydrous silica, which has water locked in its formula, too. Scientists have experimented with growing plants using Martian-like conditions and found success with alfalfa. Harvesting alfalfa also helped improve the growth of other crops, like turnips and lettuce. While water may be available on the red planet, the air on Mars is mostly carbon dioxide. On the bright side, and we are, the Mars Oxygen in situ Resource Utilization Experiment are, the Mars Oxy can produce oxygen on Mars, which could be crucial for future missions. As for energy sources on Mars, solar, wind, and geothermal energy are a few promising options. Solar power is less effective on Mars due to weaker sunlight and dust storms. But wind power and geothermal energy could serve as reliable alternatives. With these sources in place, humans could potentially sustain life on Mars. But let's get back to comparing our sibling planets. While both Mars and Earth have moons, and Mars even has two of them, Venus has zero, just like Mercury. 
Due to its proximity to the Sun and the star's gravitational pull, Mercury lacks the ability to retain its own moon. The likelihood of any moon orbiting Mercury either colliding with the planet or being drawn into the orbit of the Sun is high. That's all clear and understandable. But the absence of moons around Venus remains an unsolved puzzle for scientists. Despite Venus's scorching hot temperatures, scientists think that even today, it might not be as hostile to life as we once thought. A recent MIT study found 19 amino acids surviving in a Venus-like solution for the whole month. Yep, some like it hot. Also, Rocket Lab and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology are teaming up to send an uncrewed spacecraft, Venus Life Finder, on a mission to Venus. This spacecraft will search for signs of life in the Venusian atmosphere using a special instrument called an autofluorescing nephelometer. And no, I didn't make that up. Originally set to launch in 2023, the mission is now pushed back to December 2024 with arrival at Venus in May 2025. The goal of the mission is to discover organic compounds in Venus's atmosphere, which could point to the possibility of habitable conditions in the cloud layer. The spacecraft is designed with a Photon Explorer cruise stage and a compact atmospheric probe equipped with that nephelometer thingy. The small probe will descend through the Venusian atmosphere, collecting data on cloud particles and organic compounds. In 2020, scientists made a big announcement about finding phosphine on Venus, a compound that could be linked to life. While they're still working on confirming this, using information from telescopes or even past missions, there might be evidence hidden in old NASA data received from Venus that could shed more light on the discovery. The potential presence of phosphine on Venus has stirred excitement and caution among scientists. To make sure, they need more data from telescopes or new space missions. If they find this gas, it might mean there is some form of life producing it in the planet's clouds. This discovery would be a huge step toward understanding Venus better. Some experts think that sending probes to Venus to directly detect phosphine would be the most effective way to confirm its presence. An 80s NASA mission may have already detected phosphine, but scientists back then didn't realize it. Now, this data is being re-evaluated to uncover any overlooked evidence of the presence of the gas. This could also suggest that the compound has been in Venus's atmosphere for decades, raising questions about its source. But not everyone is convinced of this interpretation, which evokes a debate among scientists about the true nature of the detected gases. Old data from other missions may also hold clues about phosphate on Venus. While new spacecraft are going to explore the planet, it's possible that the key to unlocking this mystery lies in decades-old mission records. In total, there have been 46 space missions to Venus, including some flybys where gravity lent a helping hand. The last time we successfully landed a spacecraft on Venus was way back in June 1985 as part of the Vega 2 mission. So, let's see what Venus Life Finder will discover. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.